Hi, I'm Dr. Kimberly Olson, and we're going to talk today about shutting down your head. In particular, I want to talk with you about social anxiety and racing thoughts. So when most people think of social anxiety disorder, which you're going to hear the term social phobia from me because that's what they called it when I was in grad school and the symptoms haven't changed. Just know I'm using those terms interchangeably. Most people think of the like fear of public speaking, fear of doing something humiliating if you're out at a restaurant and things like that. And all of those definitely can be signs of social phobia. But guess what else is? Picking yourself apart after every social interaction you have with others. At the end of the day, social phobia is fear of negative evaluation. Okay. And so you have social exchanges with people and you come home and, or maybe you're driving home. Maybe you don't make it all the way home and you're doing absolute mental gymnastics with this. And you recognize cognitively that maybe the exchange that happened was no big deal, or you shouldn't be thinking too hard on this, but your head stays there. And it's the middle of the night, and gee, it's a really good time to think about what you said to Nancy, okay? Or it's a really good time to think about that disagreement you had with Michael, okay? And, um, and it's not uncommon, by the way, for human beings to replay exchanges and go, I wish I would have said this, okay? That's perfectly human and normal. I am talking about when uh, the situation I'm talking about is when you're stuck, Okay, I almost like to think about it when you go back in uh, the old records. Okay, remember records would get skips in them and you get stuck sort of in this neurological loop and you're stuck and you're skipping and you're skipping and you can't seem to put this thought in the proper place and the proper perspective. So I was doing some research online because I too have to go back and collect my thoughts on this stuff. And when we start talking about racing thoughts we could be talking of course mania you could be talking about anxiety you could even be talking about depression i mean there's any number of things are ocd okay and to be candid with you as a psychologist i'm not sure if they're not all part of the same neural glitch okay um, but again that's just my humble opinion but the question becomes what what the hell do we do with this okay i'm glitching okay um uh, Think about the, uh, remember the Stepford Wives, the, the new one where they were glitching? Um, I think sometimes that when we have racing thoughts or intrusive thoughts and things like that, I think of us as glitching. We're very much stuck on something, fixated on something, ruminating on something that, again, cognitively and intellectually you recognize it shouldn't be this big of a deal, but it is, and you're stuck. And again, if you're a person who tends to glitch on social exchanges, and you're your worst critic, okay? Um, there's usually a, a shame base underneath all of that, but that's a topic for another day. I wanna just talk with you about um, just a couple of reminders of things that you can do to deal with it when you're glitching, okay? Some of these come from the DBT camp, that's Dialectical Behavioral Therapy, uh, ACT, Acceptance and Commitment Therapy, and then of course, good old fashioned CBT camp. Um, so, I mean, Beck talked about thought stopping, okay? So I think it's definitely worthwhile to um, say stop or cancel, cancel and do thought replacement. So for example, um, I shouldn't have said that to Nancy. Stop. There's nothing wrong with what you said to Nancy, okay? And I think that's good. I think it's good to evaluate both the validity of your thought, like what I said was maybe what I said was stupid. Maybe that's your glitch. Um, is that true? Okay. I think it's important to question the validity of thought and also the utility more importantly, meaning what utility means is that if I choose to believe that what I said to Nancy is stupid and by deductive reasoning, therefore I'm stupid. How is that helping you to believe that? That's the utility of the thought. So that's a cognitive behavioral back camp. And I love that, except that for people who tend to glitch, Okay, they intellectually get that, no, it's not true. They intellectually get, I shouldn't be spending all this time focusing and thinking about this. 
Okay. So that's why, thank God for some postmodernism, um, who has helped us really recognize that um, the way out isn't necessarily to avoid, but the way out is through. And I certainly find that for people who, like myself, glitch from time to time. Okay. And so one of the techniques that um, the ACT folks use is called cognitive diffusion. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the comments um, my favorite cognitive diffusion activity. Uh, it's not done by me. It's done by another provider. And I love the way that she does it um, because, first of all, it's not super long. I've come to realize that all of our attention spans, especially when we're glitching, are about three seconds, okay? So her cognitive diffusion exercise is about 10 minutes, which is gonna be max for somebody who's glitching and it works beautifully. So how is cognitive diffusion different from meditation? If I'm doing a meditation with somebody and I'm asking you to, uh, you know, imagine you're drifting out into the sea and I'm relaxing you and all of those things are wonderful and valid. I may even be telling you, uh, pretend like you're, you're dropping, all of your negative thoughts to the bottom of the ocean. I don't know, maybe we got you on a boat. And that's a beautiful thing, right? And it does offer some comfort. But for anybody who fixates or has intrusive thoughts or glitches from time to time, it's not going to go away by that method. So there's some DBT or dialectical behavioral therapy stuff you can do. Um, and it's going to sound kind of silly when I say it. You're going to think, Olson, this is never going to work. Just come on, trust me, I glitch. Okay, this is not coming from a, a psychologist who never glitches. This is coming from somebody who glitches. Okay. Um, one of the things is ice cubes. If you put ice cubes between your wrists or even behind your neck, what we're looking for here is a neurological reboot. Okay, what do you do when your computer's glitching? right? Most of us will shut it down and reboot it because you're noticing that no matter what, you know, keys you hit, no matter what you're doing, it's still glitching. So we need to reboot. So there's a couple of ways to definitely reboot. So ice often helps, okay? A mindfulness activity helps. And I know how hard this is, right? You're glitching. You're stuck on a thought cognition. Uh, you know, I embarrassed myself. I did something wrong. Glitch, glitch, glitch. Um, lighting a candle, looking at a candle, becoming completely fixated on a candle for five or 10 minutes can help. The other thing is grounding, just stopping yourself and noticing your chair. Describe the texture of your chair. Describe things in a room. When I've got somebody who's glitching, I'm going to have them, we're going to start by describe everything that's in this room. And I don't mean in general details, okay? It's an office, yeah. I mean, what colors are in that painting? Um, what is uh, what color is the desk? What what shape is the desk in? Um, how does the couch feel? All those kinds of things because it helps bring you back into the damn room. Because when you're glitching, okay, you're not centered. So we need to help, we can help ourselves with doing some grounding exercises. Um, the other thing, and I heard this um, actually from another YouTuber that I really liked. It was uh, the OCD and anxiety uh, channel. Um, they talked about something that I thought was fabulous because it fits with ACT. Okay. Acceptance and commitment therapy tells you that the only way out is through. Okay. Because you're not going to avoid it. As soon as I tell you to stop thinking about a white bear, the first thing you're going to think about is the white bear. So if you're glitching on something and I tell you, don't think about that. That's not real. You're putting way too much emphasis on it. Okay. It's not going to help. It might help for two seconds, but then you're going to start glitching again. Um, one of the things that they suggested, which I really, really liked, which was invite the thought in. Okay. So I shouldn't have said that to Nancy. Maybe that's my cognition. Um, Instead of fixating on that and trying to avoid it, which, by the way, what we resist persists, okay? Said you're going to invite it in and say, you know what? That might be the case. So it becomes an acceptable thought because as soon as you make something an unacceptable thought, then that's when we get stuck. I'm also going to include another video for you uh, in the comments section. It's called The Unwanted Party Guests. Okay. And again, this comes from the ACT camp, which says that 
we all have aspects of our personality that feel unacceptable to us. Our problem is in fighting with them, okay? Because again, what we resist persists. How can we handle this negative cognition in a way that is putting it in its proper place? Okay. How do we invite the unwanted party guest in? And how do we deal with the fact that sometimes we're going to glitch? How do we do it differently? So I'm going to put those techniques up. And then, of course, there is a million others. But I just wanted to really put this video out there because I know so many people who really have undiagnosed social phobia. Because, again, when we think about social phobia, we think about somebody at a podium. Okay, But that's not how it works for many people. It works for some people that way. But for many people, again, it's just that inner critic. And for some people, that inner critic becomes so bad that they stop socializing together. Which, of course, all dysfunction, mental dysfunction, that is, grows in isolation. I'm Dr. Kimberly Olson. Thank you for your time.